Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're answering another fan question uh, that comes up pretty frequently. Um, it, it's interesting because this one comes up a lot online and we don't get it much in person. But people are always asking, you know, what are the holes along the side of the ship for? And why does water pump out of them? The first part of that is pretty easy and obvious that those are uh, drains primarily for deck drains. War-built ships don't have portholes in the hull, so there, there's no openings like that. IO-class battleships have some in the superstructure where the officers' quarters are, but uh, none in the hull. This was a weak point that uh, even pre-war ships had many of their portholes blanked over during the war, and uh, ships like the Iowa's built with a multi-layer hull didn't have room from them for them from the start. So, uh, why in footage of this ship do you see water pumping out of these holes all the time? Some of them are attached to bilge pumps and things like that deep down in the ship, and there are occasions when they would pump out the bilge or pump out boiler feed water or you know pump out tanks that uh, have too much water and um, you don't want your tanks above about 90% because, you know, temperature gets colder and it expands and you don't want that to pop rivets or anything in your tanks. Uh, so there are occasions to pump out tanks. In most of the footage, namely uh, Vietnam and 80s footage that you see, particularly that we use on the channel, we can tell you 100% it is not sanitary water being pumped out in the ocean because the ship had holding tanks at that point. So then why do you see massive amounts of water coming out? Is the ship leaking? No. Uh, in an earlier video, I introduced the concept of gold-plated ships, where pre-war ships tend to be gold platers, and wartime ships tend to be uh, war-built construction. They're not designed to last that long. They go out, but they don't have to come back. Even though the Iowa-class battleships are built in wartime, they're still capital ships that are expected to serve for 20 or 25 years, and so they have many gold plate functions. They, they didn't skimp on the construction of these vessels. And one of the uh, complex additional features that's added to these that isn't added to wartime ships is a drainage system from the various decks that goes through plumbing behind the bulkheads. But primarily this plumbing is not on the outside of the ship, it's on the inside of the ship. Why is that? Well, this water is mixing with the steel this rainwater, and uh, that steel might be rusty, it might have oil on it, it might be dirty in some ways, it might have wet paint on it, and then this water runs down the side of the ship, it leaves all sorts of nasty stains. Well, this is a capital ship representing the United States of America, so it has to look clean and presentable at all times. Uh, and so by putting those pipes inside the ship, the water isn't running down the outside, it's running down the inside. Where these deck drains are pretty low in the ship, are going to be cleaned off by wave action as the ship sails when she's in service. So it makes sense. And um, something that these drains had in service that they do not have right now were pipes that came out and stuck out a little bit further than the sides of the ship. These were all taken off when the ship was taken through the Panama Canal. It would have been 99 and most recently. Um, then it made the ship too wide to go through. So they were taken off, the museum has never replaced them, so you do get some areas where there's rust stains coming down the hull of the ship. So what do they do on war-built ships? Well, they just cut a notch in the gunnel and let the water run down the sides of the ship. Now, this is a great feature when the ship is in service, but as a museum, we hate it. The ship is made out of armor plate. That armor plate does not rust easily. But the mild steel piping which in places is mixed with dissimilar metals, brass and copper mixed with black iron, uh, means that it wastes away, particularly the Navy doesn't tend to solder their joints together, they tend to use threaded joints uh, so that you can take these apart to do maintenance or uh, replace them when needed. Uh, so around that threading where you've got two dissimilar metals coming together, uh, they, they rot away. Another issue with that is here in uh, further north, we have to put salt down in the winter to keep people from slipping. When people walk on that salt on the deck, it wears away the wood, it chips up the paint, um, 
the salt water is bad for the paint and the steel underneath, and it's really bad for the mild steel plumbing that it's then being drained from when all that snow and salt melts and goes out to sea. So our plumbing wastes away and that rainwater, which otherwise had no way into a watertight ship, uh, is now draining through the deck drains into the inside of the ship. All that aside, the reason you see water running out of these deck drains in many of the historic footage that you see is not that the ship is pumping out leaks, it is water running through the deck drains. Now, it looks like a perfectly sunny day. Why is there water through, coming through the deck drains? Because they're washing down the deck all the time. You, you got 2018 year old boys on the ship, you got to make work for them. Uh, just like we've got the deck drains to keep the ship looking good, you've got to wash the ship down to make the ship look good. On rainy days, you're getting a freshwater wash down, so you don't need to do that. On dry days, particularly when you're near shore, you're about to go into port somewhere, you want to make the ship look really good, you might wash the ship down using the fire mains. And then you get a bunch of water coming out of these scuppers. So that's most likely what you guys are seeing in the footage that's leading to you asking these questions. This is a question we saw in the comment section of a number of other videos. If you have any questions about Iowa class battleships, leave them in the comment section down below and uh, maybe we'll make a video about those too if we see an, it pop up enough. Odds are we've made this video already. We're over 650 videos on the channel in the last two years, so be sure to check our other videos by using the search function on the YouTube page before you post your question. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State and from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support, and there's a link below to a donate button if you'd like to continue helping the channel. Another way you can support the museum is by liking, sharing, and subscribing. If you'd like to so spend an evening with me and other battleship enthusiasts and support the museum, Saturday, January 8th, we are hosting a meet and greet on board the ship. It starts at 4.30 and will probably run to about 9 p.m. Uh, during the talk, I'm going to answer questions from people like you. And also, we're going to uh, answer, talk about my opinions on a couple of my favorite questions. Um, one of them, what would a modernized Iowa-class battleship look like in 2022? And another one, what would have happened if Battleship New Jersey was in the San Bernardino Strait? Those are just a couple of the questions. We'll have some other ones. And again, you guys can submit questions. This uh, talk probably will not end up on the YouTube channel, uh, and if it does, it'll be months before it happens. So if you're in the area and you want to su uh, support the museum, I'd love it if you came out and met me. The winter is traditionally a very slow time for the museum, so coming out and participating in events like this really helps us get through to the next busy season. There's a link in the description below with more information if you're interested in attending.